Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll be giving a latest update on the heat wave we are seeing going across the whole of the British Isles at the moment and we'll also have a look at the potential for a few thunderstorms around as well. We have seen a few thunderstorms across today, they were very isolated but if you did see them there was quite active lightning and heavy rain. So do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, link is in the description. So for this video, I'm just going to start by having a look at the, U at the latest UK Met Office warnings. Now today, they have a new feature for their warnings where they have released an extreme heat warning. Now, this extreme heat sort of category only is amber and red warning. So I would suspect we need temperatures probably in excess of 35 degrees to be getting the red warning. And at the moment, we're going to be seeing temperatures in excess of 30 degrees, which we're going to see the amber warning. Now, I've seen some people puzzled um, on Twitter as to why this is in the South West and West Midlands and Central Southern England, whereas many areas in the northeast, eastern areas and in the London and Southeast area are actually seeing some of the highest temperatures, with London seeing around 31 or maybe even 32 rounded up in a few locations today, hotter than what we've seen in the West. But I do suspect um, that's what Met Office do tend to do for their warnings, they look at impacts, um, and 31, 32 degrees, which, which we're going to be seeing quite widely across the south, is more rare and more extreme further south for the southwest and parts of the West Midlands, parts of South Wales as well, as it's rarest to happen than it is in London and South East. So that's why I suspect this has only been issued in the west and the southwest. So high temperatures by, both by day and night will continue this week leading to public health impacts. Highs again look around 30 degrees, maybe a tad warmer in a few spots over the next four days and potentially only around 18, 19 or 20 degree lows. But it's from 4 p.m. today until midnight um, Thursday evening. So four days of some quite intense conditions. Adverse health effects are likely to be experienced by those vulnerable to extreme heat. Wider population are likely to experience adverse health effects, dehydration, nausea, fatigue. Uh, more people are likely to visit coastal areas and lakes, giving an increased risk of water safety incidents. That's interesting. So the extreme heat warning actually includes other risks associated with hotter temperatures. Some changing in working practices and daily routines, an increased chance of some heat-sensitive systems and equipments. Uh, power cuts at homes and businesses, some delay to road, rail and air travel. Um, so if we do have a look at the impact matrix, you can see it's high impact and very likely. But again, um, the Met Office won't issue a warning if it is in the yellow band. Um, as uh, as it's pretty much, uh, there's no real point in doing that because we do tend to see sort of temperatures in excess of 25 degrees quite regularly um, for most areas. And it's not really... That um, we don't, I don't think they want to issue warnings for something that's not going to be too dangerous. When they do issue these extreme heat warnings, I think they do want them to stand out, similar to when they do an amber or red warning for snow, where we see it occasionally, maybe once a year or so. Um, so they do want to keep it for extreme circumstances. So the hot weather is expected to continue until later this this week. High temperatures expected both by day and night, peaking Thursday before temperatures fall on Friday. So if we now have a look at the latest GFS, we'll just run through this over the next 10 days or so. Um, so you can see at the moment we've got a big area of high pressure over the top of the country, but we did see a cold front move through, which has brought a bit of cloud for eastern areas, and we've seen some bubbly cloud today. There's been a bit of instability around, and that's why we've seen those isolated thunderstorms. But again, because we're generally under high pressure, uh, very few thunderstorms have really popped off. But where they have, they've been quite, quite severe. But the high pressure is going to hang around over the next few days. You see upper air temperatures. Um, upper air temperatures are in excess of 10 degrees at 850 HPA, if not 12 or 14 degrees. You can see the peak are in the southwest. So I suspect that's why they've got the heat warning there as well, because that's where the upper air temperatures are highest. So it's likely to reach the highest temperatures in that area. Through Tuesday, again, does, nothing really changes through Tuesday, Wednesday, and even Thursday, nothing really changes before we do see low pressure try and move in. Now, it does have some hotter air ahead of it, so by Friday, especially in the southeast and eastern parts, we could see some quite hot temperatures. But further southwards and westwards, see low pressure moving in with some colder air, um, and that's going to potentially spark off a few thunderstorms, which we may look at at the end of this video. 
beyond that, that low pressure doesn't be through, and then eventually we do go into more of a westerly pattern, um, with the upper air temperatures cooling down a little bit. Still could have pleasant days around mid to low 20s, but nothing really on the sort of warmth we've had this week. High pressure, though, at around day 10 does start to build in. Um, if we do have a look at the uh, pressure patterns, it doesn't look like there's going to be too much uh, intense heat within that. Um, but you see high pressure does generally build in, but then we do see low pressure move through just beyond day 10, potentially introducing thundery activity within that hotter air. Um, and as we head to the end of the run, still generally low pressure dominated. Still includes of high pressure, but generally low pressure is never too far away. So it does look like we're going to have repeated bouts of thunderstorms, occluded fronts, bringing heavy, persistent rain at times, but a lot of showery activity in between days of probably sunshine um, and a bit of cloud around. So it doesn't look like an absolute washout at this stage, but it definitely does look like a little bit more unsettled, uh, well, quite significantly more unsettled than we're going to be seeing at the moment. So if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, if we look at the 850 HPA and precipitation, you can see over the next sort of four or five days, temperatures in excess of around three, four, five degrees above average peaking, around thursday friday that's where we could see some really high temperatures in the southeast but you can see over the next couple of days there's potential of a few showers around um i say to thunderstorms especially further eastwards and then for the south where we have a bit more instability beyond that as we're into the next weekend big thunderstorm and shower activity maybe some more persistent rain as well as we see that low pressure move in with weather fronts in the longer term still quite unsettled and you can still see the uh, 850 hp average um, for the ensembles is around the sort of 1981 to 2010 mean so temperatures are going to be around average but you can see there's a lot of scatter on this if we are on some of the warmer ensemble members with the precipitation it'll be sunshine um, warm temperatures and thunderstorms if we're in the cooler part it's probably more likely to be cloudy um, and more persistent rain bringing those temperatures down so we'll just have to keep an eye on that again it is still sort of seven eight days beyond but definitely does look like now towards the end of this week into the weekend we're going to be seeing temperatures drop with significant rain to return for many beyond that is where we still got the uncertainty in around eight nine days time so we now do run through the temperature charts we'll just run through until the end of this week is that uh, until the rain does move in so if you can see tomorrow afternoon temperatures are going to be widely mid to high 20s or even 30 degrees in London um, and a few other locations. Wednesday temperatures still very hot, um, widely high to mid high 20s, 29, 28 degrees and then maybe even 30 degrees in parts of the southeast. By Thursday, Met Office thinking the temperature is going to peak on Thursday, but you can see by Thursday, it actually starting to cool down a little bit in the southwest. Still high 20s um, in many central areas, maybe low 20s. We we'll have to keep an eye on how Thursday does develop, as we'll have to see if we do get another consecutive day of 30 degrees, because we've seen 30 degrees on Saturday, 30 degrees on Sunday, and again today. So we have to keep an eye on how long this streak does last. As we head into Friday, you can see temperatures still warm further northwards where we still have more sunshine. And still in the east is around 24, 25, but we have that precipitation and rain moving in. It does mean it's going to cool down to temperatures quite significantly. And by Saturday, most areas are a lot cooler. In the north, still a little bit more settled and still with warmer temperatures. We could see mid-20s, but generally everywhere is cooling down by the weekend. So if we do have a look at the UK, uh, sorry, at the GM run at UK temperatures, you can see, see through tomorrow afternoon, see temperatures around 30 degrees quite widely, potentially peaking around 31 degrees in the southwest. So maybe the GFS wonder playing the temperatures in the southwest, but we do have that extreme heat warning, but widely high 20s, if not low 30s. Through Wednesday, temperatures do pick up once again overnight, really hardly getting below 20 degrees. A few spots maybe getting down to 17, 18 degrees, maybe really down to maybe 14, 15 degrees, but many cities and towns remaining in 20s, 21 degrees or so, especially in London, maybe Birmingham as well. So quite quite warm and potent overnight, uh, uncomfortable sleeping. And then through Wednesday, temperatures still quite hot in the southwest. You could see 32 degrees in the southwest, 
30 or 31 degrees widely against central southern areas and even into western areas and parts of south wales as well and southern parts of ireland and then further east still 30 degrees and northwards maybe a little bit uh, cooler with high 20s and then through thursday where the met office predicts the peak temperatures could be widely once again 30 or 31 degrees so similar to wednesday but we'll have to keep an eye on sort of what microclimates could come into play boosting those temperatures but widely again mid to high 20s if not low 30s and then by friday temperatures still quite hot in central areas around 28 29 in southern ireland but that colder air or cooler air with rain and cloud is moving in and by saturday afternoon many areas are around 10 degrees cooler than the day before still parts of ireland northern england scotland maybe are still quite warm around mid 20s as it's still a bit settled there so if we do have a look at the Icon Run, which is a more high-resolution model, so it should forecast this a little bit better than the other two models we have had a look at. So by Tuesday afternoon, widely high 20s, if not 30 or 31 degrees. Wednesday is going to see very warm conditions. Again, widely high 20s, 28, 29 degrees in most areas, if not 30 degrees in parts of South Wales, around the Bristol area, or 30 degrees down in the southwest. And then very muggy over uh, muggy nights once again, and then into Thursday. Temperatures potentially a degree or so colder or cooler, as I said, it's still going to be high 20s, around 28, 29, if not 30 degrees locally. But it does definitely does look like everywhere is a degree or two colder or cooler than the day before. And then Friday, most areas cooling down, maybe 26, 27 further northwards and north westwards as cooler um, air is moving in for the south as we do have ra uh, rain, cloud, and thunderstorms likely to be moving in. Um, and then you look at Saturday temperatures, widely much cooler. So if we do have a look at the precipitation charts, we can see for throughout tomorrow afternoon, there's potential for more thunderstorms in the southeast. Um, again, we'll be isolated, so I have to keep an eye on the radar where those cumulonimbus clouds do pop off. Through Wednesday, again, maybe a few showers around, but less so there. Through Thursday, things looking largely dry before showers and thunderstorms heading from the south. It does look mainly a southern half of England, sort of a fair with that heavy rain. And does look like potentially for some, some embedded thunderstorms, if not just very heavy, significant rain. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for Friday and Saturday. If you now have a look at UK Met Office temperatures, and then we'll have a look at their precipitation charts. Um, so yeah, if we do run through, you can see by Tuesday afternoon, we're going to be seeing temperatures widely into the low 30s, around 31, 32 degrees possible, um, in sort of West Midlands, Central Southern England, 32 degrees, looking like, likely around Southampton, and then around Birmingham again, maybe 32 degrees or so, feeling very hot there, and maybe 31 degrees in London, so widely a very hot day, a degree or two, Hotter there on the UK Met Office run overnight, very muggy once again, getting down to high teens, if not 20 degrees. And then by Wednesday, temperatures hotting up even further. Temperatures perhaps looking like they're going to be peaking early afternoon, potentially because there may be some cloud bubbling up through the afternoon. But 33 degrees in sort of central southern England, heading into the southwest, maybe 32 degrees. And widely high 20s, if not 30 degrees. So very, very hot. Central Southern Ireland could be seeing 30 degrees as well. But yeah, very hot there. And you can see why um, there is that heat warning in the southwest. We are going to see the high temperatures potentially in that southwest quadrant. So we can see, looking at the raw met, uh, data of the UK Met Office run, why they have issued that warning in the southwest with the highest temperatures. So looking at simply the UK Met Office run, it does look like that is where we can be seeing peak temperatures around 33 degrees potentially on Wednesday. It is supported by other models, but I did definitely do think they've based that warning specifically off this UK Met Office model. Again, it is high resolution. It's a very reliable model, so I wouldn't doubt it too much. It does look look like in that sort of area, Bristol, southwards, down into the southwest. That's where we could be seeing the highest temperatures. And then through Thursday, again, a very hot day. Once again, maybe a degree or two cooler, around 31, 32 degree peak temperatures further westwards. A little bit cooler further eastwards, potentially a sea breeze coming in um, before we do start to see rain cloud and cooler temperatures come in by friday 
around 23, 24 degrees, maybe 28 degrees in in, uh, in Ireland, maybe 29 degrees in northern England before rain and cloud moves in for the weekend. So if we do have a look at precipitation rates, you can see through tomorrow, we could be seeing a few thunderstorms pop off, especially in eastern areas and southeast. Again, it won't be exactly as modeled as this. They will be very isolated and potentially could form in sort of lines where we see storms form on the outflow boundary. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, have a look at convection tomorrow, look at the radar and uh, have a look out the window as you'll be able to see these clouds really booming if you're going to be seeing a thunderstorm um, tomorrow afternoon. For Wednesday again, maybe a few isolated showers through tomorrow afternoon. That's potentially why the temperatures do get a bit um, uh, get a bit stopped in that afternoon of Wednesday. That's why temperatures do look like they're going to be peaking at 2 p.m. as showers and cloud could prohibit the temperatures from getting a little bit hotter. And then through Thursday, again, a few showers potentially further westwards before we see rain and thunderstorms head up from the south west mainly for central southern England into East Anglia, potentially the Midlands, where we could see some very heavy rain and the potential for some quite severe thunderstorms. But we'll have to look at that near the time. In the next few days, we'll have a look at that in more detail, um, as it is 120 hours out, and I really wouldn't um, give like a specific thunderstorm warning, probably uh, unless we look 40, 48, maybe a tad longer hours out. Um... So we'll just have to keep an eye on that over this week. So if we do lastly have a look at the latest radar on the Weather Channel, just to, ice, just to show um, where we've seen those isolated thunderstorms. Now at the moment, we have one cell in Yorkshire, and then we have one small shower in central London. But we did have more activity earlier, but the sun is starting to set now, or it's getting later in the day, so it's starting to fade away but you can see earlier this afternoon around six o'clock we did have quite an intense cell across um heading kent into sort of sussex area um it was spreading sort of south westwards um and you can see we did have quite an intense cell within this area of showers and we did see some very frequent lightning within it and i've seen some very dramatic images of it these are pop-up storms so only isolated areas are really getting affected by it um but we're just keeping an eye uh, as these things are likely to happen over the next few days. We see ice and storms like this pop off. But generally, most areas have remained very dry today. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you do stay safe out there, specifically if you're in that, uh, well, especially if you're in that heat um, heat watch or heat warning zone. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.